Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another subscriber Q&A. Today we're going to be looking at a picture with minimal information and trying to help this guy identify if it's dino or something else that might be going on in this reef tank. And I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks when it comes to dealing with dino, some things that you should do and probably shouldn't do and hopefully uh, help you guys out. So with that said, uh, if you guys wanna be part of this series, you can send your questions to fishfx at gmail.com. You can add to our chat system on our fishfx.com website or you can put them in the comment section of one of our recent videos. Don't add them to older videos five, six years ago because I don't get notifications for those and y'all never see your questions. So with that said, let's go ahead and answer this here uh, or read it out first. I can't uh, rid this brown slime stuff. I did a water change. I did water changes every week, brushed the rock off, uh, sucked out all the brown slime. I have zero nitrates and zero phosphates. I'm using Tropic Marine Salt Pro Reef and using RODI water. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and uh, we don't really have much more than that for a question, but we do have a picture and we can we can get a lot from a picture. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. If we focus right to the middle of the picture, right underneath the yellow tang, you can see that there is uh, the slime. It's a very, very clear dino looking slime. We have our brown, then we have the wavy, nasty, bubbly stuff on top of the sand bed there. Uh, very good indication that it's dino. Uh, if we zoom out to the rocks, you can also see, and if you zoom into them, you can see where it's, it's starting to see the bubbles and you can see where it's separating from the rocks. Good indication that it is also dino. Now, um, What's making me lean towards it even more is uh, these zero nitrates and zero phosphates. That's a very common thing. A lot of people think, well, at least back in the day, I don't know, several years ago, everybody wanted to have zero nitrates and zero phosphates, including myself. The 125 actually suffered because of that, not only with dino, but just because coral paling and all sorts of stuff. Um, now we have now once uh, we've once figured out, or now have since figured out that zero nitrates and zero phosphates are not somewhere where we want to be. Uh, personally, I like to keep the 300 between 10 to 15 ppm of um, nitrates and 0.015 of phosphates, and I seem to do very well as long as I don't have a giant snail die and kind of screw everything up. But that's a different story. And if you didn't see that video, it's one of the previous ones that you can check out. So uh, with that being said, uh, when it comes to zero nitrates and zero phosphates, what happens is if you don't have nitrates and phosphates in your reef tank, you're not able to uh, keep the organisms alive that would keep dino at bay. <clears throat> I am a strong believer that dino is always in the reef tank, but it's in the battlefield of organisms. So if you're not having nitrates and phosphates in the tank, those organisms that would usually keep dino at bay uh, tend to die off. And that's when dino shows its head and starts taking over the reef tank. And then the balance is off and then you gotta do something about it. So what I recommend you do is um, first, uh, before you go off and try to do a dyno identification or anything like that, I, de I recommend that you get your nitrates and phosphates up. You can either do that during feeding or dosing. I get in there and manually remove this stuff every single day. Use a filter sock. Now, granted, the filter sock might not get everything, but it will help you get a good chunk of this stuff out of the tank. Manual removal on a daily basis. Add a UV. Get your nitrates and phosphates up and do that every single day. If you're removing this stuff, eventually it's gonna balance out. So when you get your nitrates and phosphates up, you're gonna start growing those organisms again. They're gonna help uh, compete with the dino. And with you removing the dino, you're gonna be able to kind of shift towards the beneficial organisms winning that battle. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, one thing I do suggest, if you're going through this and you're like, uh, going through a bunch of steps and you're not being able to get rid of the dino. Um, you can do a dino identification. I know you're not probably located in the United States based on the name. You're probably not here in the United States. But for those of you who are who are uh, in the continental United States, you can order my dino identification. I've sold probably a couple hundred of them over the last couple years. And uh, basically I'll send you the vials and you can send in your sample of your dino. I will identify it underneath the microscope here in the office and send you a plan to take care of it because uh, there are a couple different strands of dino that um, don't, uh, kind of produce the same way as the standard um, here that you see on the screen. So this is more of a type that um, will uh, uh, basically feed off of low nitrates and phosphates and kind of consume, but there are some out there that uh, that doesn't matter. They kind of go off of silicates and other types of resources in your tank, like if you're dosing a lot of aminos and stuff like that. So um, those can be identified if, if you're having an issue just doing the basic approach. Now, um, with that basic approach, again, 
manual removal, get your nitrates and phosphates up, and uh, just do that on a daily basis, keep everything in check. Um, big water changes are not gonna help you, because when you do big water changes, you're gonna remove those nutrients that you're trying to put back in the tank to fight off the dyno. So now there's other things, people have used Vibrant, I've never used it for dyno. To be honest with you, I've never used anything but the method of just getting my nutrients up in manual removal for many different species of dyno, and I've sent it to, again, hundreds of people who have been very successful. So. It's not gonna fix itself overnight, so keep that in mind. You gotta be persistent every single day. Manual removal. Now, I do uh, recommend you use, like I have a filter sock holder for a five gallon bucket. Put a filter sock in, drain the dyno through there, dump the water back in the tank. Keep doing that over and over and over again. Um, that way you're not removing the water and replacing it with fresh water, and you can keep doing it as long as you want because you're just dumping the water back into the tank. So just kind of food for thought for that. Now, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. it definitely 100% is dyno, and I think you could take care of it if you do what I said. And if not, you can always reach back out to me and I will help you out. All right, so with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to support the channel, fishfx.com, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.